All right, so guys, join the Discord. That's what I'm going to say. Completely free, one to one help. Obviously, you've seen the title. I'm going to be going over market structure, most crucial, most important, and actually the hardest part about trading, which everyone thinks that it's not because they see structure as just highs and lows. Totally the wrong way to be looking at market structure, and that's why the 95% of you will not make it within trading. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I approach market structure. If you can see any differences, then you've got to join the Discord. Let's make it even, okay? So, first of all, how I'm going to be approaching this is via the higher time frame so obviously your typical drop down analysis i can't say this enough the higher time frame is so crucial and i'm going to show you the potential when we get down to the lower time frame it's so 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 crucial and it's something that many people forget because they end up spending small amounts of time on the higher time frame and they spend all day on the one minute and wonder why they're getting stopped out 95 percent of the time so starting off Obviously, I'm not expecting you to use the weekly, but I'm showing you an example. So we are on the weekly right now. And as you can see, the high time frame straight off the bat moves a lot cleaner. If you've been trading every day for the past two weeks, you would have seen the lower time frame at the minute is absolutely dog. It is rubbish. So let's have a quick look here, right? So price is coming up on the high time frame, pulls down, just kind of does whatever it wants to do here. As you can see, price continues up. We're continuing to create new highs, right? Continuing to create new highs. We pull back, and what happens when we pull back? We need strength. We need liquidity. We need to see price take liquidity so it has that strength to continue up, to continue the trend and follow price. So, as you can see, price comes down, takes the external range liquidity. So, now it's done that, we need to be looking for the first point of interest. The first point of interest is the first order block after the liquidity. So as you can see here, we've got a huge weekly order block. As you can see, price taps into that weekly order block, then continues to create new highs. So while it's doing that, we're obviously wanting to catch a continuation. We're not looking for the initiations on such a high time frame because there is so much that can happen in a small time frame. So let's have a little look at what potentially would have happened so as you can see price comes up creates some point of liquidity which is perfect it's exactly what we need price then continues up to create a new high which is exactly also what we need because this is not going to be external liquidity without it creating a high if it didn't create a high that would be internal liquidity which then means that it's completely not important and the next point of external liquidity is going to be down here or down here so because it's external that's perfect we can anticipate price to react from that weekly order block so as you can see price does price reacts from that continues up creating a new high then obviously price starts to retrace so when price is retracing the intention you must have when approaching the market is it's retracing because it needs strength it needs liquidity so what you need to do is you need to use the lower time frames to figure out where the liquidity is sitting to then anticipate where price is going to approach and then turn around so we can see that price is trying to turn around so that's when we can start jumping down the time frames so now being on the daily we can have a quick look as you can see every single one of these order blocks has been mitigated so this order block here it's been mitigated because price comes up taps into it so when price comes back into this order block like it does here it's not going to hold this order block here gets mitigated again and then again so this order block gets mitigated so all of them mitigated so the moral of the story is price is not going to buy above this order block which is why it's so so important to understand mitigation points because you could have an order block that's already mitigated and have your entry off of it and then get stopped out wondering why it didn't hold it didn't hold because it wasn't valid because it's already been taken and what i mean by taken is you've just got a picture an order block as it's some type of level zone that's holding liquidity so once it taps into it takes that liquidity then goes right Obviously, that's not exactly how order blocks work, but it's a good way to picture it. So if it's been tapped, it's already been used, it's not going to react from again. So, as you can see, this is our first point of liquidity. The reason why I say it's our first point of liquidity is because there is no point me marking out every single individual low as a point of liquidity when we know that price is not going to buy above this level. So we might as well just have one level 
and it's not going to buy above that. So when price pushes beneath that, that's when we can start looking at the lower time frames because we understand that price has now got the potential to buy because it's beneath the level it has to come to. And the reason why I'm saying has to is because price is not going to buy without having liquidity, which is why it's such an important factor because if you're trading this approach and you're understanding that price isn't going to go to this certain level because it hasn't taken this level, it hasn't got that liquidity, you know, price isn't going to buy yet because we haven't taken liquidity. So you can then take sells down, you can take counter trend sells because we know that price 80% of the time is going to take that liquidity. So when you're entering those sales down to the liquidity, if your entry holds, you can hold full take profit with full confidence because you know that it's not or most probably not going to continue buying until it's taken. And then when it takes it, then you can look to buy. So it's like a it's a ping pong system. It's just over and over and over again. Obviously, it's not always looking nice. You are going to get stopped out, but it is a very good approach to have confidence with. So as you can see, price then comes down, takes that liquidity, and now we can jump down to a lower time frame. So now we're on the four out, we can see that price takes the low. However, as it reacts from that low, it doesn't leave us any liquidity in this leg. So what does it do? It comes down and takes the first point of liquidity. First point of liquidity can be anywhere. So if there is no liquidity in the external leg, as it's created a new higher, the first point of liquidity is still going to be that low. There is always going to be a first point of liquidity, regardless whether it's an inside low or it's an ex external low. So once it's taken that out, inducing all of the early buyers, now we know price has taken liquidity from the external side in the high time frame, and it's also induced all of the early buyers out. Price has completed the cycle it has to do, right? It has to stop out everyone before moving. That's how price moves. It's trying to target all of the buyers and sellers. So price then continues up. And then as you can see, price on the one hour is kind of a bit bit choppy, a bit rubbish, I can't lie. It does not look good whatsoever. As you can see, we have an order block here underneath the liquidity. Has it been mitigated? Yes, it has. But if we move over to Dixie, I'm going to give you one, one super important piece of information that will change your journey if you take it on board, right? So let's have a look at the 2nd of July at 8 o'clock, right? 2nd of July at 8 o'clock. As you can see, that order block, which is marked out on EU, is exactly the same as Dixie. However, it wasn't mitigated. So, therefore, it's still a valid zone because Dixie is stronger than EURUSD. Dixie is more important and more strong. So, whatever Dixie is showing, sometimes it will look invalid on EURUSD it will actually still work out because Dixie's following it. So back onto EURUSD. Um, I actually meant GBP USD. Um, CAT does completely work with VU. It's even better with VU. But regardless to say with that, as you can see, now we understand the correlation and we actually have confidence now in that zone. And you know we're, we're anticipating price to continue buying. Now we can jump down to the lower time frames and start looking at what you know price is currently doing as you can see on the 15 minute we get a nice bit of momentum pushing down so i like that when we move down quickly that gives me more confidence because price is trying to stop everyone out and then it's going to continue on if we jump down to the five minute we can see the exact point of entry right might be the three minute but what we're doing is i'm entering off of the first candle with volume that pushes into the direction so as you can see here that would be your exact point of entry, your stops just beneath. And the reason why I've got it there is because if price comes down here and stops us out and then continues up, we understand that that's inducement and we can potentially catch a re-entry. So the whole point with this approach is you can take so many different opportunities and you can be aggressive because when the risk to reward is you know one to five, one to ten every single time, you can afford to be taking more aggressive entries. I'm not saying you're going to be catching 1 to 40s every single day. You know, you might see a 1 to 20 every two or three months, but the, the, the possibilities that you see on a daily basis are 1 to 5s. They might not be confident enough for you to take, but there are opportunities that are 1 to 5, 1 to 10 every single day. So 
that's what you've got to bear in mind. Obviously, this trade is completely unrealistic. I'm not saying you would have held this, you know, completely, but the reasons behind it, which I'm telling you and expressing, is completely valid. So as long as you're taking it in, you will be spotting opportunities like this. It's one to forty-two, which yes, like I said, is not realistic, but having this system, having this approach you are going to spot these moves. Obviously, because it's on such a higher time frame, you would not have caught this. I would not have caught this. But using this approach and technique on the lower time frames, you're still going to be catching similar similar trades, you know, with a shorter duration, um, which might be a 1 to 10. But I was just showing this because it was so clear, right? Obviously, I could show you many, many examples, but I'm not going to do that. Um, what I just wanted to make sure and make sure that I'm describing clearly is you have to have to stay on the higher time frame for as long as you can. You could literally just watch the one hour time frame for four weeks and take two trades. If one of them is a loss and one of them's a winner, you're gonna be making at least five, ten percent, right? You could live a happy, comfortable life off of that. That's what I'm just trying to say. Obviously, no one really does that. But the potential is there. You don't need to be taking trades every single day. I've taken three opportunities in the past two and a half, nearly three weeks. One was a stop loss for 0.3%. One was a break even. And yes, uh, this morning on GU, right? Which I posted in the Discord and you know did a little breakdown for. Just to make it clear, you don't have to chase trades every single day. Most winning traders are not taking trades every day. I didn't take a trade for an entire month at the start of the year, okay? So I'm going to leave this video here. Hopefully the market structure kind of approach kind of turns your turns your head on a little bit. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys in the Discord and see some new faces. But I'm going to leave that here now. Make sure you watch it twice, three times, four times. Write everything down. Study it all. I'm not going to be giving you this as easy ever again, okay? Sweet. See you later.